Today we're going to talk about the DigiRig, a quick and easy way to use your radio on digital modes out in the field. And as you can see, it's tiny. Today I'm going to walk you through on how to hook this up uh, using an FT891 and a Windows 10 laptop. It's very simple, only takes three cables. A sound cable, a USB cable from this, and the USB cable from your radio. Let's take a closer look. All right, here is everything the DigiRig comes with. It comes with an audio cable, a green serial cable, and the USB cable. The ferrites are not included. I added those because you will need some. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and hook the USB up to this DigiRig. It is USB-C. We'll go ahead and plug it into the computer. That way, if any drivers need to install, they can go ahead and install now. And for the 891, the only other cable you're going to need on the DigiRig side is the audio cable, and it's black, and it goes into the black uh, socket on the DigiRig. And the other cable that you're going to need is a USB-B cable, which it, uh, if anyone's familiar with the uh, USB printers, this is technically a printer cable as most people know it. And on the other side, it has USB-A. And to plug this cable from the DigiRig in, you'll want to make sure this little black plastic piece, if you may be able to see it, it goes up. And it goes into the DIN port right next to the USB port. And the other port you need, plug in your USB-B to your USB-B port on the radio and a USB port on your laptop. And that is it for the cabling. So now let's go ahead and walk through getting this all set up on the computer. You'll want to go out and download WSJTX. I'm not going to go through on installing the so downloading and installing the software. I'll drop a link in the description below uh, for the website to go get it. Very simple and straightforward install. Since we're in here, we'll need to go ahead and turn our radio on. And our radio is now on. We'll want to go to File and Settings. We'll want to go to the Audio tab and set our audio. And we'll also need to open the device manager. So on this DigiRig, on, on my per particular Windows machine, it shows up as USB PNP sound device. So I have the input as the microphone, uh, USB PNP sound device, and the output is the speaker's USB PNP sound device. Now you can go over to radio, the CAT control, which is the USB-B cable that goes from your radio to your laptop. It is COM4 on this computer, and the way to figure that out, you'll open Device Manager. You can type it in this little search box down below, and it will pop up. Go ahead and open it. Click on it and open it. Scroll on down to Ports, COM, and LPT. And the easiest way to figure that out is just unplug and plug the cable back in, and you'll see which COM ports, uh, which COM ports come up. On my particular one, it is COM 4 and 5 for both of them. Um, typically, on this, you'll want to select the lowest number COM port that shows up when you plug that cable in uh, for your CAT control on your FT891. And the other COM port that shows up is COM9, and that's this USB to UART bridge, which is the DigiRig. So we'll need to know ports COM4 and COM9. So my USB CAT control I have set to COM4. Baud rate is 9600 baud, and that is set within the DeepF menu. It should be setting, it is setting 0506 in the DeepF menu. And when you're, since you're in the DeepF menu, go ahead and go to your HF SSB power. 
uh, which is option 16-01, and set it down to like 20 or 30 uh, watts. Because you don't want to be running uh, an 891 at 100 watts on a uh, full duty cycle mode. It'll get hot and overheat in a hurry. Uh, you can run it at like 50 watts. I've done that for a little bit. Uh, it's kind of hot out here today, so I was running at uh, 20 watts and 30 watts, and the fan was uh, running pretty good, and it was getting a little warm. All right, so that baud rate in my radio was 9600 baud, so I have it set in here as 9600 baud. Data bits I have as default, stop as default, handshake as default, and the DTR RTS I don't mess with. Um, under the PTT method, it is RTS for the DigiRig, and that is port COM9, which is the DigiRig interface itself. My mode I have set to USB, and my split operation I have set to none. Go ahead and hit the test cap button. It should light up green, which it does. And make sure you have an antenna plugged in and your power turned down on your radio, and go ahead and hit test PTT and you'll look for your red light in your SWR meter or power meter to make some movements on your radio, and that tells you that you are actually transmitting. And you'll see the red light kind of come on to the, uh, to the left a little bit too. And here a relay click. And that's really about it. Under your general tab, make sure to have your call sign in there and your grid square, and just hit okay. Now, since we have that all set up, we are going to try to uh, make a quick contact. Uh, one thing you can do to make sure that it's all working, you can just sit back and call CQ and uh, see if you hear anybody. See if anybody comes back to you. If not, go back through, check all your settings, make sure everything's all plugged in, and uh, you should be good. Let's call CQ really quick. And we need to select an open frequency. Uh, let's go up here. I'm gonna just go ahead and call call CQ and see if, see if we can get anybody to come back to us real quick. Now, sometimes if you're having problems, uh, make sure to check all your cables. If you get an error popping up saying that you're no sound device connected, you will definitely need to add more clip-on ferret chokes because that is one of the problems I had when I first set this up. I had to make sure I had just choked everything. I've got a choke on my antenna coming in and uh, I've got chokes on my USB cable, on my audio cable, and everything just seems to be working. As you can see here, we got a uh, person WE8R came back to us, and we'll just go ahead and make this contact real quick. And he came back at a minus 12, gave us the 73, and I've got a couple other people calling me, but I am uh, uh, done making contacts for the day. So that is it. If you have any questions or having any trouble, uh, drop something in the comments below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. My work schedule is a little bit busy, so it might take a little bit for me to get back to you. Also, if you like this kind of content, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll continue making more of it. I'm going to link another video up here in the corner. Go ahead and go check it out and see if you like that one too. 73.